let's talk about painting oil on paper. The first thing you got to do is get some of this fixable or fixate or whatever you call it. It's a spray that basically seals the paper. You would spray this on your charcoal drawings or pencil drawings. It also protects the surface, but for oil painting, I want you to see what happens. I discovered this completely by accident one day. I didn't have any canvas. All I had was pads of paper. And I really wanted to paint a picture, so I just, I thought, well, I'll just spray this sealer on the paper, wait for a few minutes for it to dry, and let's just see what happens. Well, I'm going to demonstrate what happens here today. I just basically wait for that sealer to dry and then come back with a, a normal approach as I would with a canvas or a board or anything. Just draw in my outline with my brush and I'm using oil paints and what colors are happening here is, is Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of Azo Yellow. And uh, I'm thinning my paint with just a little bit of linseed oil, not much. I am afraid if I go too high on the linseed oil, then, well, it just might sort of dissolve the paper and that won't be good. Now, I'm making the far shore pretty dark and uh, pretty focused. And basically the idea here is that I really want to draw your eye through the middle of the painting. Uh, and right into that sort of low midpoint of the shore across the water. So I'll make that a fairly strong color, fairly dense. They call that value, that's a dark value. Now I'm taking uh, Prussian blue, pretty much straight out of the tube, and uh, applying it to the uh, water and then add a little bit of titanium white and just kind of do that along the top of the water which is closer to the horizon you know when you look out at water the farther away it gets the lighter it becomes in your view and when there's a source of light like the sun in the clouds or whatever it will cause little highlights on the water and that's what i'm showing here in Ontario, Canada, where I live, we have a lot of small lakes and some big ones. And everybody around here loves to go off to the cottage on the weekends and they like to go hiking and, and some like to go hunting and fishing and whatever. I like to go painting. So now I'm coming down to the land that we're sort of standing on, if you can imagine that. And I'm adding a little bit of Azo Yellow. And into that same Prussian Blue, I'm creating uh, a bit of harmony in the colors. Well, you could say it's because I just played got a dirty brush. And, and you'd be right. But the fact of the matter is, is I, I like to use one brush for most of my painting. And I will clean it out along the way. Here I've got some stronger dose of azo yellow and a little bit of titanium white mixed into it but in this way i kind of get my signature earthy tones to my paintings and that's just my style you don't have to paint that way and i know for some of the real realist artists out there well this just don't, won't do but that's okay i'm having fun and uh and basically by lightening it up as it gets closer to me, I'm creating a foreground and a far ground. Now the water gives us that feeling of distance because it gets lighter towards the horizon line, but in the grasses below, I just want the grass to flow in the breezes and make it a little bit happy. I'll drop a little bit of, a little bit of pink, which is just basically uh, a lizard crimson with a bit of titanium white mixed into it and some of that azo yellow and we get that kind of nice warm well, blades of grass blowing in the breeze a little more lizard crimson down towards the bottom just to kind of create a framework for ourselves here uh, a little bit dark around the edges you know that way it kind of keeps your eye within the borders of the painting 
and also forces your eye off into the water and, and across to the far shore. I'm very loose, especially in this demonstration. I know you don't have all day, and neither do I. We got places to go, things to do, people to see. I know. So I even sped this video up a little bit because I know, well, you got other things you want to do with your day. But for now, you can hang out with me for this eight minutes and we'll have some fun. Learn something new that maybe I, I hope you'll give it a try. Up in the sky, oh, brooding clouds. Yeah, dark water like that. Of course, there must be a cloudy sky. And they're moving. You can see the wind is blowing them. Titanium white, Prussian blue, a little bit of azure yellow. Primary, those are my colors for the, uh, for the sky. And I won't uh, beleaguer this with a whole lot of details today. I just really want to demonstrate the paper. That's, that's the whole point of us getting together here today. We're not going to paint a big masterpiece, although it's kind of turning out kind of nice, don't you think? A little bit density up in the sky. I've got a little bit of pink going on up there too, like that's the harmony, you know? We sort of bring other areas of the painting together that way when we sort of share the colors throughout the painting. And, uh, well, it stands, stands like a like a breezy day on the on the water's edge. Birch trees, of course, got to have a little bit of white. That's straight up titanium white. We're just dragging that down through the through the trees. And uh, you'll notice how I got one tree right smack in front of us here, and it goes right out of the bottom of the painting and right out of the top of the painting. And and that's basically to to create again a little more depth. We can't see the top or the bottom of the tree, and that's a good thing because we're standing right beside it. But the other trees, well, they also go right out of the top, but they stop uh, in the grasses. And some are smaller, and some are skinnier. These are all lending themselves to, well, suggesting depth to the viewer. That you could almost take your little walking stick and just go for a walk down there to the water's edge and watch the wind blow and have yourself a, a beautiful afternoon. Now, don't forget to sign your painting. It's, it's very important. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but I'm going to drop a couple of Azo Yellow highlights into the far shore. We don't want it to be all so dark and gloomy. The sun is shining over there, too. And uh, that just kind of creates more points of interest as well. So now let's just get that tiny little brush and uh, score your name into your painting you want people to know who did this after all you know when they find it a hundred years from now and they wonder who painted this little sweet painting <laughs> they'll look you up and find out you're worth millions and millions of dollars well anyway uh back to reality <laughs> thanks for dropping in if you enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe and that way you'll be notified of future videos and i'll thank you from the bottom of my heart for hanging out with me here on The Robert Painter on YouTube.